The fourth and final video of this series is just going to talk about the difference between M1 and M2, different ways that we can measure money. We start off with a narrow definition of the money supply, which is called M1. M1 includes currency that's in circulation, so that's the currency held by households and firms, not the currency that's sitting in the banks. We'll get to that stuff later. It also includes checking account balances and holdings of traveler's checks. Uh, as you can see from the Fred graph, we have seen an increase in the M1 money stock. It's just below $4 trillion as of this recording. A broader definition of money is called M2. That's the sum of M1, savings account deposits, some cash deposits, money market deposits, and money market mutual funds. Now, what I care that you understand is that M2 includes M1, plus it has the savings account and these other types of uh, assets included. M1 is a very liquid definition of money, whereas M2 is a less liquid definition of money. Last but not least, I pulled the diagram from your textbook to show you the difference between M1 and M2. As you can see, these numbers are a little lower than what was shown in the Fred graphs. That's because these are static from your textbook. You can see with M1, the majority is checking account deposits, and then there's a decent amount of currency, and traveler's checks is a very small amount. If you flip over to the M2 side, the one thing you need to realize is that M1 is included. So that $3.5 billion or $3.5 trillion is included in that M2. And then it adds in savings accounts, some small denomination time deposits, and the money market and mutual fund shares to finish it up. That concludes this quick four video introduction to money. If you are one of my students who's watching this in the 2018 fall semester, there's going to be a quiz on these videos that will be sent out in your course uh, learning management system.